Digital Nerd episode 73. This time I thought I would talk to you about your taxes. Why your taxes? I recently got an email one from one of the fellow listeners and they said, hey, how easy is it to know that interest from treasuries are tax-free? Because I'm counting on them to be tax-free. How do I know they are really tax-free? So I thought I'd give you a quick primer on that couple of housekeeping items. As usual, there is a playlist. Make sure you use the playlist so you're not hunting around. The playlist organizes it in order. We do have a website where you can see the yield Super Bowl, as we call it. It compares all the yield securities in one shot. My disclaimers, this is not tax advice. This is not investment advice. It is education. I am not a wealth management advisor. I do not make commissions. I do not have any ancillary revenue, and this is certainly not about politics or product. Well, what is the tax treatment of bonds? We're going to cover cover the background of it. We're going to look at the brokerage statement, something you would get from your brokerage, and walk from there to your state income tax and make sure that you are able to understand how it is accounted for and do a couple of quick checks on where we can go next. So the background You may or may not remember. If you don't, we got a problem. It is episode 73, so I hope you remember treasuries, whether it's a bill, a bond, a zero, it doesn't matter. Treasuries are state tax exempt. They are federally taxable. Munis are federal tax exempt. In some cases, state tax exempt, except in many states, the state needs the revenue, so they just tax the interest income from munis as well. Corporate bond interest is taxed everywhere. And some agency bonds, not all, some agency bonds are state tax exempt. The rest are fully taxable like a corporate bond. So how do we put it in perspective? That's a good looking boardroom right there. A corporate bond issued by that boardroom that yields 4% and you live in a state that has a 6% tax and your income tax bracket is 20%. I'm just using these for very simple arithmetic. That would mean of your 4%, 26% is eaten up by taxes. So for every 100 you invest, for every $4 in yield you get, you will be left with 296 in your bank account. The rest are gone for taxes, just as a perspective. The muni that yields 3%, I am kidding here. I have nothing against munis. If they pay a good yield, I would buy them all day. And the 4% munis are as you know, uh, evasive as a Yeti. So if you find a 4% muni at par, you let me know. But a muni that pays 3% and trades at par would theoretically save you 80-ish cents, 60 cents in taxes. It would cost you 6% in Illinois state tax because you live in Illinois and you bought an Illinois muni, you're still going to pay state tax. So in theory, You know, you kind of have $3.44 where I'm even giving the freebie of the federal tax saved as though it is money landed in your account. However, if you bought a treasury that today yields 5.5%, you would add 5.5% and save on 6% taxes. My harp, my commercial for buying United States treasury bonds or bills or notes, you cannot touch it in after-tax yield today. They are amazing. Having said that, how do you know you're getting the tax credit on your state tax filing? And that is what we're going to figure out. And how do you know all these lessons that you allegedly learned this education from Yield Nerd is actually translating into tax benefits? So I thought we'd go into our tax accountants and double check them. If you use a software to do your tax accounting, this is one way to make sure your software is doing it right. You're pushing the right buttons. So the first place you would start is you would go into your brokerage. I'm not endorsing Schwab. I use Schwab. But there you would go into statements and you would say, show me tax forms. And you would go find the composite year end summary. And notice this year end summary is coming six months too late. You file your taxes on April 15th, so you're going to use whatever current year-end summary you have as of that date. You're going to download that by clicking this wonderful PDF uh, link. And once you open it, you're going to see it has several income statements. There is a composite, 
There is a dividend income statement. There is an interest income statement, a miscellaneous and original issue discount. And all of these have various categories. The de minimis principle, meaning if there is a treasury that has a one year term and you bought the treasury at $99.75 or higher, then it is considered you know, state taxable, I mean, state tax free, and it is not considered ordinary income. If, however, you picked it up at an enormous discount, $96 for a $100 par, then you will get bit. The difference between de minimis and the enormously high interest in that conceptual example is not a capital gains for you, even if it is a five year zero in a silly example. Even in that scenario, you will be paying ordinary income. So watch out, don't buy treasuries at a huge discount. Make sure that you're thinking through that. So anyway, you would find all of these in the interest income statements. And now you play what I call the box game. What do I mean by the box game? The very first thing you're gonna do is go into the 1099 int from your brokerage. And box number three is going to say, here is the interest from savings bonds and treasury obligations. So your brokerage will spike out what you earned in interest from treasuries. Why do they do that? So you can account for taxes properly. Similarly, if you made dividends, your brokerage will spike out the qualified dividends, which are taxed at a capital gains rate, separately from different like cash dividends or ordinary dividends. So you should watch out and make sure that you are looking at it smartly. The ordinary dividends are taxed as ordinary income. Qualified dividends are taxed at a lower rate. So be smart. One quick viewer note, preferred stock interest payments, preferred stock coupons, very rarely are qualified. There are certain conditions where they are qualified, but for the most part, preferred stocks may pay a higher dividend, but they are cash dividends. They are taxed at a higher rate. Having said that, you take that information from that box, which is box three in your 1099 INT, and you now open your state tax filing and you go to box seven. Box seven says, hey, I got your state income but is there anything you haven't told me, things that could decrease your base income? And you go, oh, yes, yes, yes. I forgot to tell you, I have a credit. I have a credit on my you know, base income, and that credit is the other, which is the Schedule M. So you would go to your Schedule M, and in your Schedule M, it looks like this. If you open it, you will find box number 22, and that says, how much did you earn from treasury bonds, treasury bills, savings bonds, agency bonds that qualify? Tell me what you earned and you need to show me exactly what you earned to make sure I can give you the state tax credit. And that will then be shown somewhere. You now you may get this as an output when you enter it into your tax software, your tax accountant may have given this to you, but somewhere in there is a schedule M as an attachment where they will say, here is how much interest I earned. And there is a concept called accrued interest. You know, you may remember when you buy someone else's treasury in the secondary market, they are earning interest and you kind of make them whole. You pay them that interest up front and you then wait for the next coupon date and you get that interest back. If this is not clear to you, you should watch the unit on treasuries again. And, uh, that accrued interest, you do not pay taxes on that. How cool. Bond premium is also deductible. It's a little bit of a longer story. Many people pitch premium bonds for that reason. They say, oh, pay $107 for a $100 bond. It's all going to work out even because, you know, you do have a, you know, tax advantages. I don't like it. You do you. I don't like it for two reasons. If the bond is called, it is going to be called at par and you will have a huge capital loss of that $7. If the bond is not called, you only get to take that bond premium as what is called an accretion over the lifetime of the bond. So you are giving your money today and you're giving extra today, thinking you're getting a higher yield when in reality, your yield to maturity tends to be lower and all of this tax funny business, in my opinion, over a period of time doesn't add up. If you have any doubts on that, 
watch the previous episode which talks about what happens when you buy bonds at a premium, what happens when you buy it at a discount, what happens when you buy it at par. Moral of the story, it would be great if the broker had just paid your taxes so you don't have to worry about it. They don't. It would also be great if they showed you what is the after-tax keep. And they don't, so you have to hunt around for all of this. So where do bond investors turn to? Here is what I saw myself doing. When I found a bond, and this is a text I sent to a couple of my friends earlier, and I said, hey, by the way, there is a new issue agency bond. There are no commissions at the brokerage. It pays 6.25% and it is state tax free. However, no agency is gonna sit around and pay 6.25% for three years or five years, so it'll get called. But hey, you can make this yield, buy at your own risk. I'm not giving investment advice. And when I sent this text, I got an idea. What if Yield Nerd could send yield alerts? You could go on your brokerage and you could get an alert when there is a new muni bond, but you cannot get one when there is a new agency bond. You cannot get an alert when there is a new treasury where the yield is greater than a certain amount and you can buy it at par. And so I thought I would start an email list and I would do it for free at the moment at least. So if you would like yield alerts, send an email to yieldnerd at gmail.com and say, I would like yield alerts. I'm not going to bombard your inbox. And if it is a frequency greater than you like, please feel free to email me back and say, hey, I don't want these and I'm certainly not looking to spam you. My thought is to share some of the trades that I am making and send an alert saying, here is an agency bond that looks very interesting or here is a treasury or whatever it may be. By no means do I stand to gain by whether you buy a bond or not. I just thought I would provide alerts in a more timely basis. You do you. If you want that, feel free to send me an email and subscribe to it. These are not recommendations. You are making decisions. These are just timely education. Questions, comments, feel free to email yieldnerd at gmail.com. Thank you for listening.